everyone. Uh, next, we're going to have Opera Ebony, and let me just cue that. Just uh, talk about this educational component that you have, where you're doing outreach, everybody. If you could just briefly, while I'm getting the next one queued up. Um, the education component in terms of going to schools and things like that. Anybody? Oh, yes. Opera Creole, definitely. We are determined to go places where you don't expect to see opera singers, especially black opera singers. We're the only classical or operatic group that performs at jazz festival, uh, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival every year. Uh, we go into schools. We um, do a lot of, um, I'm broadening more my presentations for music history classes. And uh, we're hoping to expand more into um, young artist program in the future. Wonderful. Now I'm going to do this with Wayne and we haven't really rehearsed yet. So um, right. <laughs> Wayne, I will just give you a couple of prompts, but let's go for it. Um, hey, why this not? is why this not? is this is from a presentation that I did at Boston University a few years ago. It's it's not even complete uh, because the archives are so full. But I started off with this saying: "Until lions tell their tale, the story of the hunt will always glorify the hunter." An African mm. proverb, because mm -hmm. oftentimes people, other people, are telling our stories. So right this on. is a retrospective of Opera Ebony. Uh, I call Opera Ebony the Grand Dame of uh, Opera, yeah. at least on the East East Coast. And I started off talking about Chevalier de Saint-Georges because oftentimes yes. people say that we have no place in opera. And as we've heard already with Kristen's presentation and Giovanna's presentation, we've always been there. Amen. And uh, to me, I think that singing of opera kind of relates to the West African griots, you know? Because mm -hmm. you have to sing acoustically, you have to remember long, long uh, stories and whatnot. And singing is a part of African culture. So I want to talk about the founders, and we're very fortunate to have one of the founders with us here today, Wayne Sanders. First, there was Benjamin Matthews, Wayne Sanders, Sister Mary Elise, and Margaret Harris, who was also mm -hmm. a conductor. There's a photograph of, of uh, Ben and a photograph of Wayne and then a photograph of Sister Lisa and a photograph of Margaret Harris. Margaret Harris actually was a child prodigy and mm -hmm. uh, made her debut with the Los Angeles Symphony at a very young age. Sister Lisa was a singer and she uh, was integral in, uh, I think, resurrecting the music department at Xavier University. She was. Uh, yeah. Founding mm -hmm. of Opera South, retired mm -hmm. and then joined up with Ben and Wayne and Margaret. So Wayne, let me just talk about the organizing and then I want you to give us some oral history, okay? We shall see. <laughs> okay, so the foundation of Opera Ebony was built on entrepreneurship, community engagement, outreach, using administrators and fundraisers, and guilds, and then the response and support of the arts community. Um, that means response support of the arts community that means coming in and singing for soup or your bread or your supper not necessarily demanding a huge fee so marion anderson was um i think you can see this i have to move this bar mm -hmm. a little bit up she was opera ebony's first fundraising uh chairperson in 1974. Do -do -do -do. And then we're going to talk about the productions. So, Wayne, can you uh, just give us give us some history about the founding and how Opera Ebony got started? You know, when I think about it, I'm not going to go into my law, my brother's to say his preaching thing. I'm not going to preach. But um, now I want you to lean just a little down further so we can see your face or lift the camera oh, a little higher. OK, I got a hat on. So there you go. Hair. Can you see me? <laughs> Yes, we can like see it. you now. Okay. Uh, Opera Ebony was formed, believe it or not, in 1974 here at the Ansonia Condominium. Then it was the Ansonia Hotel. Now it's called the Ansonia Condominium on 74th Street and Broadway. It's quite a famous uh, place, really. 
But uh, Margaret Harris, Sister Elise, Ben and I were standing there, and Sister Elise looked at Ben and said, you know you need to start a company. What's the name of it? Just like that. And Ben said, uh, 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 uh Ebony. Albert. She said, that's it. Now, can we pray? She grabbed our hands. <laughs> it was powerful. And I got very emotional when things hit certain truths. And uh, uh, we were all co-founders. Ben formed our revenue in 1974. And when I say that, it's like, how far? To, oh, oh, OK. I see. OK. But uh, uh, it was powerful. And we. Well, you can also talk about how um, you, your first production before I show the photograph and how the community in Philadelphia joined together Ooh. in this effort. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I remember when we did the Aida and I said, we must do it in English. And I remember uh, 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 he said that, uh, I'm forgetting, Everett Ever Lee said, you cannot do that. No, 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 no. I said, we must. Our English is just as good, and we're going to show that you... Anyway, we did it, and the police went sort of wild, Carolyn. It went, and when Eugene Holmes came from, from Dusseldorf, Germany, you would have thought that that somebody, you know, they went, they started, they threw, they carried on just like the Italians did. But I remember you talking about uh, when you What's spoke that? with the choreographer, and he said, no, 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 the little ones have to be involved in this as well. Yes. And they came, talk about and that? Almost stole, they came out and almost stole the show. Now, when we say little ones, we're talking about five-year-olds. You're talking about little ones. And they acted, and they were singing, and they were moving. Uh, uh, there's, there's, it's not an age thing. It's an inner thing that hits, I'm going to say, hits the spirit. And you get little work that you do on it, and then you put them on stage they turned it out, if I can put it that way. And uh, it was quite incredible. Will you talk about the sisters who came to the performance and took Ooh. up a couple of roles? Not only the sisters came to the performance, they also before gave some of their, some of their little loop to the performance. And then they were there in three or four roles in their habits. And uh, uh, when things get that deep for me, I've always, as a, as a little child, I started crying. So I, the tears started flowing. I sat there and I said, this is history, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I knew nothing. You know, it's, I'm a part of it. I felt very fortunate, very blessed on that, you know? Can you talk about the response of the audience to Eugene Holmes singing? Oh, no, I'm on, I'm on. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't. He started singing. And I'll never forget that later on, I, I don't want to jump to the end of it, but they, he started singing. Those people jumped out of their seats. They started releasing program. They, they carried on. I said, now either Jesse's here or Patty LaBelle or somebody's here. They acted, yes, they responded to him from within, from his depth. Wayne, Wayne could I ask you a question? Yes. Just so that, um... My uh, oral yes. history is up to date. Now, I was in that first production of Aida. I, said, I was yeah, going to no. mention that, Gregory. I was going to mention don't, that. I've got the don't. cast list. She's, she's a, yeah. what, I, what I wanted to ask you, Wayne, was not there a precursor to Opera Ebony that Mrs. Lee told me about that you all had done Aida just a little before that at a NAM function in New York? And somebody said, we got to keep this going. Yeah, but we, it was wasn't Opera We didn't, Opera Ebony didn't do it. We weren't, we didn't start. No, it wasn't Opera did. Ebony. Yeah. Mm hmm So let me talk about the cast list. And we have <laughs> someone from the cast. The king of Egypt was Earl Grandison. That's right. The Omneris was Barbara Conrad. That's right. The Aida was Alpha Floyd, and we're going to hear a little bit of her later. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the Rodimus was Mervyn Wallace. That's right. The Romphus was Benjamin Matthews. <clears throat> I don't know, something just went down my throat. Amenasra was Eugene Holmes. Un Messaggero, 
Gregory Hopkins. <laughs> Un sacerdotesa. <clears throat> the high priestess. Wilhelmina Fernandez. Wilhelmina. And the maestro, the director. That was 40 years ago. Was Everett Lee. Now, I'm going to just share the screen again so you can see some photographs. And we have two little clips. Because the thing that was unique about Opera Ebony, and it seems to be the common thread with all of these companies, is even though it's a predominantly black company, you hire everybody. Always, from the very beginning. We in did. front of the orchestra, behind the stage. That's right. It was, I would say, an ecumenical group of people. <clears throat> yes, it was. So this is a photograph of the uh, first production of Aida, this is the triumphant scene. There's Barbara Conrad in the middle, Mervyn uh -huh. Wallace to the left, uh, Ben Matthews to the far right <clears throat> uh -huh. with the chorus. And I will say, I, I did interview for my presentation in Boston, the original chorus master who had never done an opera chorus before. Right the, next on. the next production, his name is Mr. White. The next production was Carmen and Henry Lewis uh, complimented him and saying, there was no finer chorus uh, for his preparation uh, than any chorus he had worked with in Europe. So That's right. this That's is the right. level of quality and commitment that happens with our companies. So I'm just going to kind of run through these. I have two, two audio clips I want to play for you. There's George Shirley with Veronica Tyler. These hey. are the kind of people that were coming to perform with yes. Opera Ebony. Um, the first program in New York, I'm sorry, sorry, <clears throat> sorry. It's all right. Highway One by William Grant Still. There's a program. At the Beacon Theater. At the Beacon Theater. Uh -huh. uh, the Medium and the Empresaria, also at the Beacon Theater. That's right. Uh, Cesar Antonio Suarez and Ruby Hines in Carmen. Full production. And mm -hmm. then Madame, Madame Butterfly in 1984 with Delcina Stevens. Amen. And if you will notice, she doesn't have, she has on natural makeup, but she's dressed in the costume. So uh, right on. this will cue without any commercials. If so, just one thing about Zoom, it, it sometimes it just won't cooperate. <laughs> it's doing well though, it's doing yeah. well. Yeah. Right. Alan, may yes, I sir. lighten the moment while you're, while you're searching? I just wanted to tell a story about Aida. As they've already said, I was a messenger in the original production and by the time I had grown into Rodimus, I was doing a production of Aida for um, Opera Ebony a few years later. And in the dress rehearsal, I was coming in on the chariot and the chariot broke in the dress Little rehearsal. Up. So I fell through the floor of the chariot in the dress rehearsal in the triumphal scene. Oh, God. So, in the performance, I was so nervous. I mean, here I just conquered the the um the Egyptians, but I was nervous about riding in that chariot because I thought I was going to fall through the floor again. <laughs> These are some of the risks that we as performers have to take. One time for the uh, triumphant scene, I had to be carried in by six men on a slanted metal stage, about uh, on their shoulders on t on a throne. And I always say, make friends with the supers because just make friends with them. So here's here's Delcina Stevens. <laughs>
that short a little bit <clears throat> and get Ooh. back to the um so but one of the things that I'm sorry I just had this cough for some reason now I just lost my uh I lost everything let's see there we go all right so one of the things about opera ebony is that they commissioned and they also had premieres so Frederick Douglass will hear an excerpt from that in a minute by Dorothy Redmore Amen. Sojourner, Sojourner the meeting Harriet Tubman by Leo Edwards the Outcast by Noah on O oh Freedom by Lena McLean, one of the Chicago folks. And also premieres, premieres by Tanya Leon, uh, U.S. Highway 1, the New York premiere, etc. So this activity, I think you have so much in common, all the companies. Now this is from Amen. Douglas. Amen, yes. And this is from the final scene. Just so you hear this lush writing yes. uh, that Dorothy Rudd Moore has produced. And I'm just hoping someone will pick this up and uh, premiere it. I'll, I'll skip the opening part of the video. an excerpt from uh, Frederick Douglass and I'm hoping that someone will uh, take it up and give him a full production. More photographs, uh, programs from the outcasts, overseas engagements including uh, the Caribbean, uh, Finland, the Savolinen uh, Festival, Porgy and Bess, uh, excerpts from uh, Frederick Douglass and Tremonitia and that was uh, Opera Concert in Germany, looks like. Uh, also, some contemporary things. Sass and class. Uh, a little different Amen. variation from opera. This is the company at the Ice Palace in Finland. A letter from uh, one of the children who attended some of the school programs. I have to hurry here because I have to observe my own rules. A unity, peace, and healing uh, in remembrance of Amadou Diallo. So just like many companies, some uh, political uh, activism as well. 
Um, and the future is bright. There is the Benjamin Matthews Vocal Competition and under the direction of Gregory Shepard, who is now the general manager of Opera Ebony. So I want to thank you uh, for your patience. Next, we're going to have Harlem Opera followed by um, Lighthouse Opera and then Pamela Babb. Looks like we may run over, so please stay with us. There's more to come. Let me just uh, stop the screen share for a second. And Wayne, can you just talk about anything uh, related to Opera Ebony that's going on right now that you would like to mention while I get everything else queued up here? Well, you just got, I got so excited with all the companies and the people there. I'm telling you, it really hit me very deeply. And I know I sound like I'm preaching, but uh, 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 Opera Ebony is, is on the move and it's on the, as one little group call it, on the reboot, you know, to uh, look at things to look and, and, and move it forward because nothing stays the same. You know, you have to keep doing it to keep to keep it inventive. And that's what yeah. part of our conversation will be about um, mm -hmm. once we get to Miss Bab and how we can strengthen one another yes. and support one another. Very important. Yes. So next, Dr. Gregory Hopkins, with whom I had the wonderful joy of doing uh, one of the few bel canto operas I was I was able to do as Rosina, and he was Lindoro, in a production of the Barbara Seville down in Martinique. It was a pleasure. He's a wonderful colleague, and he is the artistic and general manager for Harlem Opera Theater.